Alabama Crimson Tide. Very rarely have Nick Saban and the Tide been doubted the way that they have been heading into the 2023 season. Uh, and, and the biggest reason may be the fact that the public does not trust the quarterback situation. I don't know that I necessarily blame them. Win total sitting at 10 and a half for this team to go over is plus 140 to go under is minus 170 uh, odds to win the SEC West minus 105 odds to win the conference plus 300. And then of course you got the odds to make the playoff at plus 135 odds to win the national title. They are second behind Georgia at plus 600 uh, Parker, not a lot of returning production for this team. They're number 114 adjusted returning production, but Three of the last four recruiting classes in Tuscaloosa have been top 10 highest rated classes of all time, which leads us to the age old question. Uh, how important is the quarterback in modern college football for a team that's built like this? Like other than quarterback, the tight have very few question marks as far as talent position groups, et cetera, go. There's two new coordinators. You got OC Tommy Reese. You got uh, the defense coordinator, Kevin Steele, you know, Reese from Notre Dame, Steele from Miami. Uh, there's been more than a few hints that Bama's planning to get back to, I believe, what, what was dubbed joyless murder ball uh, by Dallas Turner at SEC Media Days. Uh, Parker, tell me what you're seeing here. What, what are we looking for from Alabama? Yeah, is, uh, is Nick Saban trying to turn back the clock to the to the mid 2000s, and saying, "Screw it, look, we're just gonna we're just gonna be better than everybody else. We're gonna dominate, and we're gonna it doesn't matter who's playing quarterback there." Uh, they just Fra saw Fra Georgia do it for two straight yeah, years, Fra right? Fra <laughs> and the geek can be back there tossing tutties, and it'll be fine, right? Like I don't know what he want out of that, but um, yeah, overwhelming talent advantage. I think that um, obviously, again, that 2020, like they beat Georgia in 2021. Uh, they they could have beaten them again. Uh, circumstances, obviously, they played twice, different outcomes. I'm not trying to say. That. I'm just saying. I think that the rumors that, you know, you're seeing articles this offseason, like, is this the make or break season for Nick Saban's legacy? No, no. It continues to be the case that Nick Saban is underrated. Um, I think that, yes, uh, Aaron, wonderful point. Absolutely. Why am I not taking plus money for Nick Saban to win the conference? Why am I not doing that? There, there, there's zero reason not to make that better. Uh, for, for plus 300 here. I think they're going to be talented, more talented than everyone else. Um, you get Tommy Reese coming to uh, Nick Saban's school for kids who can't coach good. Uh, the offense or the defensive side of things, I think Pete Golding really needed a change of scenery. I think that's going to work out well um, for them. Still kind of wild that Kevin Steele is there. Um, that just seems odd in the in the grand legacy of, of college football. But uh, again, you know, the returning production doesn't matter as much because they do have the talent um, and they do have the development. I think that they are on the whole underrated as a program. Um, and yeah, it might take a little bit of time for them to gel, but that's not going to affect their SEC conference schedule at all. They're going to be able to hit the ground running, uh, you know, even if Texas is a little bit of a bump in the road. So Alabama, Nick Saban, plus money to win the SEC. I, I don't know what I don't know what else the conversation needs to be. Kyle, talk to me about Bama. Uh, Texas, LSU, Tennessee all come to Tuscaloosa this year. The road slate at Mississippi State, uh, at Texas A&M, at Kentucky, and at Auburn. Um, as the guys in the chat mentioned, uh, Aaron Rod brought in, he said, is is there actually value on some championship odds with Saban's bunch down in T-Town? Uh, this is, you're getting up a 10 and a half. Uh, they've lost two regular season games two times since 2010. That's it. So uh, tell me tell me what you're seeing here, Kyle. Well, I want to know who wants to bet under 10 and a half at minus 170. I mean, minus 170 on a Nick Saban coach team and you're taking under, uh, you know, that I just don't understand that bet at all. Um, Alabama, I remember that. I remember the meme that came out of uh, David Pollock saying when Nick Saban was sitting right by there that Georgia has become the dominant team in college football, and then he gets like you know the death stare from Nick Saban. Uh, we know that Saban's a winner. He's done this year after year. Uh, you know, yes, the quarterback is not great, but we've seen Alabama win championships without great quarterbacks many, many times. Um, you know, I, to me. Alabama doesn't have a bunch of glaring weaknesses. You know, the offensive line is a bit inexperienced. Um, they, they have a lot of tough games, but most of them are home. Gary's talked about this the last couple of years. Alabama has not really played very well on the road in the SEC. Um, their games on the road in the SEC are about as friendly as they could be. You know, they're, they're going to have tough games, certainly. Uh, at Mississippi State, at A&M there, can they get both through both of those weeks without a loss? I think that would be a key. Uh, the road performance needs to pick up a bit. You know, do I really want to take them to win at all? Uh, I, I'm not sure. The, the plus price on Nick Saban seems like I should be. As far as winning the SEC, I still think uh, Georgia minus 110 is a pretty good bet to win the SEC. But under 10 and a half minus 170, I think you're just insane if you're taking under 10 and a half minus 170. 
I, I'm going to ride the over here at plus 140. Uh, give me Nick Saban with all that talent and, and something to prove, right? Especially with all the talk about Georgia, he's switching things over. Teams are not going to be used to the way that uh, that this team is playing this year. Uh, I think we're going to see a different version of Alabama than we have seen in the past five, six, seven seasons. Uh, and it could be interesting. Could be interesting. All right, we got two more teams that we got to discuss. We're going to keep the ball rolling. Got to pick up the pace again. Uh, we like to talk a lot. I'm sure you guys know that by now. 